Okay, so welcome back. So last time we left off, we have this system where we can swipe, or in this case, it's kind of clicking and dragging with the mouse, uh, and switch any two pieces that we want. If we swipe in from outside of the board, nothing weird happens. If we swipe out from inside the board, nothing weird happens. So we're pretty good. Now we just need to make it so that it can actually detect when there's a match of three or more. And that's what we're going to work on today. So we're not going to actually have the pieces destroy themselves. We're just going to have a visual representation of when there's a match of three or more so that our player can know that um, there is a match and so that you yourself can know that your logic is working correctly. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to add a variable to the piece that is whether or not it's matched. And then we're going to add just a really small method inside the piece scene that we'll take out eventually that says if the piece is matched, and we're going to cut the alpha value, um, the transparency of, sorry for that weird cut, we'll cut the alpha value, which is the transparency of the piece, to be about half, so it'll look like it's going dim, so that we can at least know when we have a match of three, if it looks like there's a match of three or not. All right, so let's get started. Um, we've already done a lot of the logic for this before, when we were uh, filling the board without making a match. So we're going to be going into our grid script here, and I'm going to go into distraction free mode. I'm even going to make this nice and big so that I can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, and I want to take a look at that uh, match at method that we have. And so here we were using uh, a column, a row, and a color. And we were saying, essentially checking to see if we were more than one away from the left edge of the board, we would check the pieces to the left. And if both pieces to the left matched, we would return true. Um, then we would uh, check uh, down, sorry, <laughs> if we were at least two rows away from the bottom, we check both pieces beneath us, and then we'd return true if that was true. Let me get rid of this pass here. That's not necessary. Uh, so we're going to be doing something really similar, only we're going to be um, iterating through every piece on the board and then sending it to this match at. So um, let's start with this. Uh, I'm going to create a new method. I'm going to put mine after my process delta. It doesn't really matter where this goes. Uh, I'm going to call this function find matches. And this doesn't take any arguments. And I'll add a pass just to make sure nothing weird happens at first here. All right, cool. So now I've got this set up, I'm going to jump over to my piece script. And like I said, I'm going to add a variable here that tells you whether or not it's matched. So up in my global variables, I'm going to add var uh, matched equals false. So I'm defaulting this to false. You don't have to add, well, I mean, you do because you want it to be Boolean. But anyway, <laughs> and then in my function process delta, um, actually, before I do that, I'm going to add another little function here just to change the transparency. And I'm going to call this function uh, dim. And I want this function to be something that just takes our sprite and changes the opacity of it. So to do that, I'm going to access the sprite. And you can access the sprite a few different ways. One, you can use get node. And then in uh, quotations, the name of the node that you want to access, which is sprite in our case. Uh, once you get that node, then we want to access some properties of it. So let's talk a little bit about the opacity and the color selection on a sprite. So I'm going to go to my scenes here. I'm going to choose my regular piece scene, the one that's the default. Now on here I have my sprite and it's called capital S sprite, so that's good. And the properties of the sprite that make it uh, appear or be visible are in this canvas item section. Uh, if you look under visibility, we have visible on modulate is actually the color. So if you hover over modulate, you'll see a little tooltip. Uh, property is modulate, the color applied to textures on this canvas item, default value 1111. And that 1111 is four different values, one for red, green, blue, and alpha. So 
it's fully red, it's fully green, and it's fully blue, which in pixels makes it white. And then um, the one that's the last one is there for the alpha value. 0.5 would be halfway transparent, zero would be fully transparent. So we're gonna be changing this modulate property. So if we jump back into our piece script here, go back and do distraction free mode. So I'm going to get the node sprite and I'm going to save that as a variable. So I'm going to say uh, var sprite is equal to get node sprite. After I access that, I'm going to say sprite.modulate is equal to, and I want to use a color. Um, here we go. And the color I want to use is 1, 1, 1, and then 0.5. So halfway transparent. All right, cool. So I'm just going to leave that method alone right there, because that's going to be something I'm going to call from my grid script once I decide to make something matched. And this is just to make sure that we have a, uh, an actual representation that we can look at. So if I go back to grid here, in my find matches script, I'm going to iterate over the entire board. So I'm going to say for i in width, and then for j in height. I'm going to check to see if um, the piece isn't null. So if all pieces i, j is not null, meaning if there is a piece there, then uh, I'm going to check left and right or up and down to see if there are matches. So uh, first I'm going to check left and right if i is greater than uh, 0 and i is less than width minus 1. So if we have room to check left and check right then I'm going to check to see uh, the pieces that are to the left and to the right. So I'm going to say if all pieces i minus 1 j is not equal to null and all pieces i plus 1 j is not equal to null. I'm going to split this to another line here too just so that it's more readable. Alright, so if we have a piece both to the left and to the right then we're going to check to see uh, what their color are, or what their colors colors are. If all pieces i minus one j dot color is equal to, and I forgot before we do this, we want to check or we want to kind of cache the color value of the piece we're currently looking at. So after I right here, after I check that all pieces i j is not equal to null, I'm going to store its color. So I'm going to say var current color is equal to all pieces ij dot color. All right, so I'm going to store that color, and then I'm going to check to see if the piece to the left has the same color. So current color, and if the piece to the right has the same color. All pieces i plus 1 j dot color is equal to current color. If that's true, then I'm going to make all of them matched. And what did I forget here? Parsing expression. Oh, I guess I can't just do that the way I wanted to. There we go. All right, cool. So, and I'll have to do that here too which makes it a little less readable, but we'll be okay. So now what I want to do is make all three of those, the one to the left, the one in the center, and the one to the right. I want to set them all to be matched, and then access that dim method. So I want to do all pieces, i minus one j uh, dot matched equals true, and all pieces I minus one, oops, there we go, I minus one J dot dim. And I'm going to do the same thing for 
the regular one, so all pieces i j dot matched equals true and all pieces i plus one j dot matched equals true and I need to do the dim too so all pieces oops i j dot dim Gosh, I, I'm so inconsistent with this whole semicolon thing. I'm trying to wrap my mind away, my mind around the standards for Python not putting semicolons at the end. It's, it's very hard for me to do that. So apologies for my inconsistencies. So all pieces i plus one j dot dim. All right, cool. So this is for left and right though. We're going to need to do it for up and down. But before we do that, let's make sure this actually works for left right matches. So after we swap our pieces, um, what I want to do is just throw in another line here to find matches. So find matches. So that's going in swap pieces. So I'm actually calling the function from somewhere. Let's go out of distraction free mode here so I can easily see the console. And let's try this. Okay. So we're going to try to get uh, a left right match. Oops. All right, cool. I caused something to break, so let's see what I broke. Function color in base node 2D piece. I thought I called it color. Didn't I call it color? So in the piece script, yeah, I called it color, C-O-L-O-R. Non-existent call function in color in piece line 25. Um, oh, okay, this is the wrong color. So, this is supposed to be, yeah, it's supposed to be capital C. Duh, I should have known when it was blue and not green. Blue is for functions, green is for system things. Let's try this again. So, I'm trying to get a horizontal match. And there we go. Detects the horizontal match just fine. Um, we don't have it in to detect a vertical match. And if we swipe out of this, again, because we can just... Like we're not destroying them or anything, we're just detecting the match. Then there's some issues, but for now, we're detecting horizontal matches just fine. So um, let's go in and let's change our code to make sure that it works for vertical matches too. So if I go uh, back to distraction free, back to my grid script. All right, so this is kind of a mess of code. Um, we can refactor this. Uh, but for today, I kind of just wanted to quick and dirty go in and cover um, all of the logic needed to get the matches working. So I'm going to copy up until this if i is greater than 0 and i is less than with minus 1. So I'm going to control C and I'm going to go down to all the way, Oop, the next line. Get rid of all these indents because they're going to come back. Control V. And now I'm checking j, which is the up and down, and j, and instead of being width minus 1, this should be height minus 1. And then instead of being i minus 1 j, this is going to be i j minus 1. And instead of being i plus 1 j, this is going to be i j plus 1. And then down here, same thing. So I'm probably going to fast forward through these changes. I'm just, everywhere it was i minus 1j, I'm making it i j minus 1. And i plus 1j, I'm making it i j plus 1. So I'm probably going to fast forward through this because you don't need to hear me talk to myself while I'm doing this. Okay, welcome back. So like I said, we're going to simple up this code here next time. For now, we were just covering the logic. So the logic again, so we're iterating through all the pieces. We're checking to see if that piece isn't null. Um, we're caching the current color. And then we're going to see if we can check both left and right. And then we're going to check both left and right. And if both those pieces exist and they have the same color, then we're going to make them all matched and we're going to make them all dimmed. Um, so let's try this. Let's go for the vertical matches now. So again, horizontal. Vertical. Vertical. 
vertical, horizontal. All right, cool. So uh, we have our match system working. Uh, when I come back, we're going to do a little bit of refactoring before we go too much further. And then we're going to uh, make sure, let's actually just show you that you can do a match of five with this. There we go. Um, we're going to make sure that we understand how timer nodes work. And then we're going to add in destroying pieces. After that, we're going to collapse the columns and then create new pieces. And that's the basic game loop. From there on, it's all fun stuff, adding special tiles and bombs and stuff like that. So be sure to be following along if you want to keep up with this. So if you want to, you can ask any questions you want down below. You can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. You can uh, join my Discord where I'm chatting pretty much every day. And yeah, have yourselves a wonderful day.